The following program is sponsored by PokerStars.com. Previously on The Big Game, Phil Locke's dance partner was Hollywood home game legend Rick Solomon. I'm more loose than the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I pop. I pop. I had something funky. He had a funky thing. I know how he thinks, you know. While Daniel Negreanu tangled with aggressive internet phenom Randy Liu, and with over 166 grand in the pot, Kid Poker showed a set to beat Lou's ladies. Turn to set. Ooh. Nice hand. Loose cannon Courtney G politely held her own against the pros. 3,500. You were supposed to just fold when I bet the flop. That was. That Sorry, was... next time I forgot. But can this cannon do more than land jabs against these heavyweights? Find out tonight on The Big Game. That's bad for me. Welcome to the big game from Las Vegas, Nevada. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff, and tonight there's almost $850,000 in cash on the table as some of the top players in the world have come to battle it out in our state-of-the-art poker room. Representing the great white north in more ways than one is kid poker Daniel Negreanu. Daniel's up the most so far with over $68,000 in profit. One of the alleged bad boys of poker, Bryn Kenny, is here. So bad, in fact, he can wear purple to the table. He's up 2,300 bucks. Internet phenom Randy Liu is known as one of the fastest players in the world. He's wasted no time getting stuck $90,000. In seed six, Hollywood home game legend Rick Solomon, who's been dubbed a certain breakfast pastry by Phil Locke, he's up over 26K. And this is our loose cannon 24-year-old Courtney G. Last time she told us about her two-year plan to become a professional poker player. She's only got a week here, though. She's played conservatively so far and is currently up over two grand. Our remaining player is one of the biggest winners from season one on the big game, Phil Locke, AKA the Unabomber, and he's standing by with Amanda Leatherman. All right, Phil, what's your assessment of this table so far? Well, it's a, a, a lot of fun. It's a great table. Um, the Muffin Man plays nearly every hand he straddles. They all like doing six stuff. I think the person probably playing best right now is Courtney. Wow, uh, really? Because she's most close to the ABC format of just like, you know, solid winning poker. The rest of us are doing gambly weird stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Courtney's name is my middle name. So that's why you like her so much? I like everyone at the table because they're friendly, good players with money in front of them. Right. Yeah. Well, you do well here, so good luck today. Thank you so much. Here's another look at the loose cannon rules. Each cannon is staked $100,000 to play. They keep all winnings above the initial 100 k And the loose cannon, who's won the most money at season's end, earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. Right now, the leading loose cannon to beat is Gonzalez Cannon. And speaking of ironic names, Phil Locke's middle name is Courtney. My middle name is Bryn Kenny. <laughs> that is very ironic. Oh, I feel so much they, better. By the way, they asked me for an assessment of the table, and I honestly said that I think <laughs> Courtney's probably playing the best, uh, according to like you know, long-term play result matchups. Yeah, We're all doing crazy. Yeah, this is not the first time the loose can has been the best player at the table. I think <laughs> I thought we were all playing a little ace queen for Phil. Loose and slippery. Raises. Maybe two aggro to this. Kenny's out. King ten for Lou. <laughs> Sorry, um, race. Race. Thirty-seven. Lou three bets to 3,700. Randy's been three betting like you read about. Muffin, thank you. Ace four suited for Solomon. He makes the call over to the cannon. Also with king 10. 37. <laughs> thank Holtz. you. I might just play now. In fact, I will. Thank you, Muffin. No problem. And lock calls. Muffin, you need I don't care that I have the third best hand. I don't even care about that. You know, it feels good. <laughs> you know, actually, it feels there. good. Deep, deep down. Jack 8-3 on the flop. Phil picks up the nut flush draw, and his ace high is still good on its own. I check. Solomon checks, as does Phil check. and Lou. I like that. Phil hates that. It was a slam dunk check raise. Ace on the turn. Check. Solomon checks his pair. And Locke's checking top pair and a flush draw. Check. Lou checks. Everything coming up lock. Seven on the river. 5K. 5K from Solomon. Locke's checking has convinced Rick he's got the best hand. And Locke calls. And Randy folds. I got an ace. Me too, I got you. 
Locke quickly shows him the news. I was about to tell everyone this is not how you play ace queen. You're supposed to bet the flop, maybe raise the flop, definitely bet the turn. And, you know, I was waiting for my check raise in the flop. Of course, Randy does not comply. Nice hand, nice hand. And the turn, I'm like, well, this means Muffin will bet. And if he doesn't, Randy for sure will bet. He didn't. I'm like, okay, now I'm playing bad. And on the river, I'm like, oh, I'm just beat. Probably, maybe not. Let's call. <laughs> a little Muffin money. That's it, kid. The bakery is on hold for a little bit. As Phil stacks his chips, let's go over the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit and becomes no limit after the flop. The blinds are two and four with a $100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least 100K, but can rebuy for up to 500,000. The big rule change this season is that a winning loose cannon cannot come back after they played the week's 150 hands. Looks like Rick Solomon's put out a sleeper straddle, which becomes live only if no one raises before it gets to him. The action will start here on Bryn Kenny. Boom. Lock it in. I had it. 6-5 <laughs> yeah. for Kenny. Folds. Was that supposed to be a name pun? <laughs> Lose out. Straddle is, what is it now, 15? Yeah, makes more sense. A sleeper straddle can be for any amount. Cannon's out. The 14 was not enough. 15's perfect. Daniel's out. It really has to be the perfect size to get Daniel to fold. All right, all right Muffin. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Lock calls with pocket fours. King Jack of spades for Solomon. Pot. Pot. You don't have to do that, Muffin. <laughs> you know, you can play fair. I'm a regular shopper. I get the baker's dozen often. Well, the price of muffins just went up. <laughs> Solomon's raised to 5,300. But you know I'm sick, and I have to see the flop. And Lock calls. I want to punish him so bad. <laughs> I want to punish you, kid. Heads up to the flop. Five tray deuce. I checked so. Phil's checked his pair Check. and open ender. Check. Turns the jack of diamonds. Phil's added a flush draw. Check. Checks it. Phil's pair no good anymore. Solomon now with top pair. And he bets 6,200. 62. That's a lot. Muffin is good. Phil likes his draw. He hurts me. Heads up to the river. Six of hearts. Phil makes a straight. Check. Jack. No good. Very decent check behind by the amateur. Figure it out. Oh, oh there it is. Miserable. I missed the bet. <laughs> I just know you like to bet against me so much. You know. <laughs> nice hand. Thank you. Wow, you had a real hand that time, not your normal nine deuce junk that you try and hurt me with, you know? At least it feels good to know that you're in there with a real hand, not the sickness. How old are you now, Randy? 25. 25? So you're getting older for like online guys. Old, older, yes, that's right. <laughs> Becoming old school. That's true, that's true. Still play fast. Yeah, you're the fastest I've ever seen. Boys, I'm unstuck. I'm gonna give you the exact uppage amount very shortly, but I know it's a lot. You got gravy, huh? I have I have talking chips, life is good. <laughs> 50. You're 90, smiling. 100, I'm up, wow, 5, 11. So how many hours did you play, 100 and what? I'm up 17 times, wow, 115 hours. Locke briefly held the record. 115 hours, and you did that just because you're Phil Locke and you can? Well, no one had done it before. I wanted to, you know, I knew 80 was the number to beat, and I thought I could do 80, and then I just, after that, I wanted to know how far I could go. No one's ever won half a million in this game. Try that. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying it. 900. Phil raises. I am trying. It's hard to win with the geniuses here, you know. Action on Bryn Kenny. 10-8. Re-raises to 3,100. He knows Phil's button range is pretty wide. Kid, are you telepathically connected to me or something? What are you doing to me? <laughs> this is so sick. I have a perfect 10. He's not lying. I have the perfect 10, but I'm going to fold. He folds. And Kenny takes it down without a fight. And Bryn and Phil are now saying nice hand and thank you to each other telepathically. But my powers are telling me this 24-year-old pro's online name is Bryn Kenny, which may not seem creative, but he did remove the space. He's won over 1.4 million on the tournament circuit, and he's into international fine dining. And why shouldn't he be? Who doesn't love IHOP? <laughs> Kenny took 28th in the 2010 World Series of Poker for a quarter mil, and he recently had a deep run at the NAPT Super High Roller event in the Bahamas for 643k. Folds over to Kenny. Daniel was at that final table with Bryn Kenny, finished second. 
Kenny raises to 1,400, call. and the action's on Lou. Makes the call. Solomon's out. Over to G. Phil, I want to tell you something. I know. Folds 8-6. You know what today feels like? What's today, today feel feels like? like? This game is very personal, you know? Phil Why? Locke and, and Rick Solomon, they've got their Hollywood game. They've got all their inside jokes. Me, right. and, me and Nanako, we've got our own little inside thing. you got Bryn Kenny, I've got a little thing. And she's just sitting there watching, but right. it's like such a weird dynamic of play. Do players. you like this better? This is fun. This is like not what we're used to. Yeah. Phil Locke's trying to listen. He's trying to listen to, yeah. to and us. And Phil Locke is playing terrible right now, just for Horrible the record. Horrible poker. Horrible. He's crazy. He's so out of it. He's like, oh my God, it's so like I'm with kings. I'm like, I'm loving myself. Oh, it's your bet the flop with ace queen suited. I'm checking it. Oh, this is ace came. I'm just going to call it. Whatever. Back to the action where Bryn Kenny and Randy Liu have seen a heads up flop, and Kenny's bet in to lose pair of kings with nothing. To the turn, nine of hearts. Does Bryn want to keep running this bluff? See ya. He does fire 6,400. He's firing dead. I'm not sure Randy Liu can fold top pair. Call. He calls. Pretty quick decision for the man known online as Nano Noko. River, the Queen of Diamonds. Kenny quickly bets 13,700. Bryn's fired the third barrel for just about half the pot. Not a lot got there in the river. And he bluffs Lou out of the pot. <laughs> Bryn Kenny bluffed with air like he's a true player. <laughs> Kenny gets Lou to lay down the winner with a three barrel bluff. Coming right back with more big game. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the big game where the Unabomber, Phil Locke, has a new lease on poker and life. Less than six months ago, I had a pretty brutal accident. I was on an ATV and I flew over a cliff at around 30, 40 miles an hour. And what happened today? I had powered myself over a, like, I don't know, 20 foot something. I didn't know that the something was there. I wished it was more like the cartoon thing where, like, you sort of hang and you have all this time to decide what to do. But the reality was like, oh my god, it's happening. This is what he jumped over. When I was sitting there bleeding and my arm was all in an S shape, I was surprised about how cheery my disposition was. My fifth broken arm. You were broken two balls at the same time? One time. It's possible I broke my radius and all at the same time. I dislocated my elbow, I shattered my wrist, I got 42 stitches in my eye, the orbital socket that holds my eyeball up broke, I broke some ribs. My whole body works except for my arm, which will fix, and that's it. They put me through the grinder, and just like the $6 million man, I've returned stronger than before. I can take, like, 20-foot, 30-foot cruising through the air and smash into the earth and still live, proving once again that humans are tenacious. It was a good day. I still had a lot of fun that day. What I learned is you don't take shortcuts on ATVs when you're going 40 miles an hour in the dunes. I knew that already. I just broke the rule. I think Phil has changed since this accident. You know, it's like when you buy an old house and there is a big wall between two rooms. It's like someone took a sledgehammer and knocked that wall out and just let all the light in. I survived it. I was probably supposed to go blind or paralyzed or something. All sorts of stuff in my body went wrong. I like to be in spots where like, no, never again. Oh my God, I can't wait to do that again. No, no, that was so sick. I'll never do it. It's like poker. Why am I shoving here? I know that if the guy has anything, he's going to call it. Yeah, I like it. the explosions in my brain. I just like it. I can't help myself. How does he not list brain damage as one of those injuries? If anything, he makes more sense now than he did before the accident. <laughs> Phil's doing well so far. He's up 16 grand. Love you, Phil. Hey, boys, I've separated my stack into two piles, the buy-in, 100K, and the profit pile. So if I play with this, it can be any kind of goofy stuff. But if I go into this stack, I'm giving you a live pro tell. The profit pile. Live pro tell. <laughs> On, a, on at least how I think. Then, then I've got the goods. I have like He was telling me all and... about the profit pile while we were playing in the 100K. <laughs> half of a stack, one side, half the other. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> one was in play and one was wasn't. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. It was the way I play, you know? That's, that was actually it's sick. To, it's like protecting the nest egg. It's like, yes, I'm okay. I gamble with this money. This is my nest egg. Yeah, that was, focus, that was yeah. sick. Your extra pile you played worse with. Which pile? This one? 
Yeah, it's the gamble pile. Yeah, once your gamble pile got big <laughs> in that 100K, man, it was all on. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> Phil Locke lies about his hands, but he tells the truth about his gamble pile. Actions folded to Rick Solomon, who calls with 8-6. Cannon, 10-4, walkie-talkie. What did you do? You just called? Folds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Playing tricky. No straddles. I think Daniel stole Rick's laugh. And Grano's checked it to the flop. 10-6-6, too hard. Solomon's hit trips. Keep it together, Rick. Keep it together. Check. <laughs> Grano checks. Solomon bets 1,000. Like that, huh? You win. Daniel folds. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> really? That's so dirty. <laughs> I almost called you King High. I was like, nah, let him take it. I was like, I'm going to hit this one for sure. Which one is less likely to have a mathematically flopping trips or getting Daniel to fold a flop? Well, you do flop trips 2% of the time. <laughs> And the sleeper straddle is on again. Solomon's made it 1,300, but it's only live if it folds to him. Kenny folds. Randy Liu, a couple of sixes. 14. 13, 13. Oh, I can't make it 14? Oh, yeah, you can make it. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Liu raises to 1,400, and now Solomon gets the fold. King Jack for the cannon. Who do you hate on TV? Who do you hate watching play? And don't say me, please. I'll be so hurt. I won't. I'll tell you after. Please don't say me. Courtney doesn't want to give away any hate tells. <laughs> no more coffee housing. Come on, Courtney. They don't call it the tight cannon. I'll call. She calls. Good luck. Yeah, it's probably best not to answer that question on camera. <laughs> probably best to wait on a break. Till calls. All right, kids. Randy, I think this is our second or third hand. I am not checking in the dark. Three-way action to the flop. 8-7 Jack. Courtney makes top pair. But now I'm checking. Phil checks. Check. Lou checks. Courtney should bet this, but based on their hands and her reps so far, I predict less action than a Colin Firth movie. <laughs> She's going for chips. 3,500. Bet's 3,500. Lock folds. Foo, just like that. Lock and Brent still communicating telepathically. So who, do you, who do you hate watching? Who do you like watching? And the LC takes watching? down a pot. Joe, what have you noticed about her play so far? What play? Okay, now that might be a bit harsh, but Courtney is last in each of these categories. She's hardly getting involved. She's seen less flops than anyone else at the table, and she's won less than 10% of the total pots. She's building a tight image, but that's only helpful if she plans on eventually using it. She's still number one in smiles right now, though, Joe, and we've got a straddle out there for 900 from Solomon. The action will start on Bryn Kenny. Queen four. <laughs> Folds. Six deuce for Lou. He lets it go. I think my straddle is live. Oh, yeah. It is live, so it's over to the cannon who folds. Daniel with queen eight. Let's go. <sighs> I hope this isn't one of those genius nine balls that just wins the putt. Nope, it's not. 31. Jack 10 for lock. Raises to 3,100. Let's see what the sleeper wakes up with. 10 nine of diamonds. How can you not defend your straddle with suited connectors? Calls. Exciting straddle. Phil's excited to have you dominated. Locke and Solomon heads up to the flop. Queen 7-7 seven, seven, rainbow. Somehow Locke has the best hand. 42. He bets 4,200, and Solomon folds. Come on. You have nothing. Don't right. come on. No, I, I, You're a liar. You always lie. Right, Show right. something if, if, you, if, you, if, you want, if you want anyone to believe you. Oh, I watch TV. I watch right. TV, and about 35 right. in a row, Phil Locke told the right. truth 0% right. of the time. He's right. He's right. Damn it. He got me. Damn. I should just said I Eventually, it got so easy to figure you out. Right, I gotta throw in, I gotta balance my range. Yeah, yeah, you gotta learn, come on. You're not balancing his lie range. Scott, you're married, you know how to balance your lie range. It's not lying, Joe, it's bluffing. We got plenty more big time action when we come back. Honestly, we do. <laughs> to see behind the scenes interviews, all this game's stats, unaired hands, and material deemed too hot for TV, visit us online. Right now, loose cannon Courtney G is murdering the game for over $2,000 and is hot on the heels of our leading loose cannon. We're going to count you down. I'm going to sit out soon. I'm up like $2,000. <laughs> there you go. He's up 3000 2600 ish The graphic just done said 2200 Solomon folds over to the cannon with queen, ace, queen. Queen, ace, queen. 16. She raises to 1600 She says it. She reminds me of John Juwanda a little bit. Oops, Daniel folds. 5-3 for Locke, he's out, and Kenny's out. Action on Lou, two queens. Courtney's raised it pretty big again, which means she's gonna be facing an even bigger three bet from Nano right now. Race. 48. There it is, 4,800. 
Courtney's in bad shape, but in general, this would be a bad fold to players that like to three bet a lot. But she does. He's good. His three bet percentage, or whatever it's called, that thing where you re race people, it's high, huh? He likes doing that. He doesn't care if he's in or out of position, too. Coincidence. Tony Denki? His three bet <laughs> PCT? Yes, Phil Locke, otherwise known as that thing where you re raise people before the flop. Randy Liu has been three betting a third of the hand so far. That's almost four times the amount of Kenny, who's in second place with 8.7%, while the players in seats one, two, and three have yet to pull this move. But maybe they're just happy letting the uber aggressive Liu take the lead and the losses. Well, last night the aggressive Liu played a huge pot against his nemesis Daniel Negreanu. What were they both thinking about? Find out as we take you behind the poker face. Well, I've played a decent amount of poker with Randy online. This is the first time I had an opportunity to play with him in a live scenario. Early on in the big game, I was raising a lot of pots, just playing very aggressively, and a lot of the table noticed this. I felt like he might be a little more uncomfortable. The loose cannon opens for 1600. Daniel calls right after. Uh, I don't make too much of it. I woke up in a small blind with pocket queens, and you know, this is like a gold mine because I've been just repopping so much and I finally get a, a pretty good hand. I make it 6,000, which is a pretty sizable raise. After she folds, I figure we're, we've got more than enough chips for me to make sense to call with pocket sevens. And I expected Daniel to call for a very wide range at this point, just given that he was in position. We're playing pretty deep stacks. I would expect him to have any suited connector, any pocket pair. Then the flop came, jack three, two, rainbow. I was trying to tell him that I had pocket threes. I'm like, wow, really cool, you know? An interesting situation, okay, because I have three threes. I didn't really listen too much into it because I figured he's just trying to sell me a story. You don't believe that. I played a lot of hands with Daniel and he thinks I'm an aggressive player, so betting outright on a flop was definitely the best decision. So I bet $8,000 into the pot. I figure he's either got aces, kings, queens, you know, or like ace, king, ace, queen. So I really want him to slow down for the most part and also potentially like set up a bluff because at that point, you know, I have sevens which beats some hands, but if he's not bluffing, I'm in trouble. So I decided to convince him that I'm gonna call the flop, call the turn, raise on the river. That's plan A. I might change my mind, but plan A is call, call, ship river. And once he called, you gotta start putting him on ranges. I'm gonna put him on like some jacks, a lot of jacks actually, and I'll say like any pocket pair that wasn't a set on the flop. But if you look at the whole range, um, there's definitely more hands that lost to pocket queens than beat me. The turn card was a seven. <laughs> Now all of a sudden my plan changed. He bet 20,000. I chose to bet 20,000 instead of checking. The reason is when he called on flop, he's more likely to have a pair. So me checking to him and letting him pocket control wasn't really a great situation, give him a free card. I figure I'm just gonna keep on betting here. I was playing aggressively, so I would expect him to put me on a bluff a lot of times and he would call me down light. If I went ahead and raised here, then he would really believe that I had three threes. I did get lucky enough to hit the set, so I thought if I raise him, he'll fold, but if he's got nothing, he might go ahead and bluff me on the river or try to because it doesn't look like I have a set. So I decide to call and hope that he bluffs the river. River card comes in ace, and he very confidently bets 47,800. So I'm actually a little bit worried. I'm now worried that you just made three aces. I think it kind of worked in my favor because the ace is a very scary card for his range. You know, I think some of the time he has ace jack. I'm also very worried that he has pocket jacks or pocket aces. He bet 50,000 almost, and he's only got 14,000 left, so I'm not folding. I certainly can't fold a set. My only thought process was, does it make sense to raise? He took his time debating. It really smells like aces. And eventually, he just called, and I actually said my hand very quickly. Queens. I thought I won for sure, um, but then he told me he turned me. Turned to set. And I'm never gonna bluff in that spot, so I think I played it right by just calling the river and not getting the extra 14,000 in value. That's just how it is, and you know, you don't wanna dwell on it too much, just kinda take the information and just move on to the next hand. You can tell Randy Liu is a true professional, not because of the way he broke the hand down, but because he didn't once complain about getting his queens cracked. Yeah, he's a winner in my book, regardless for sparing us the bad beat story. He's a role <laughs> model. Action will start on the loose cannon. She's got a 10 and a queen. Bolts. That's a little tight. On Daniel Negreanu, pocket jacks. Raises to 1,200. Action on lock, two jacks in the hole. Calls. Your three bet percent is very low. Yeah, it was like 2% or It's usually around something, something like that. Brent Kenny's called, everyone else is out. You're a flatter. Yeah. I like the flat. 
Who wants to see the flop? I'm a flop junkie. <laughs> flop junkies. Flop junkies. <laughs> <laughs> they have low. Three to the flop. Wants to see how it does him. King ace five, two hearts. Neither one of them flops a set. <laughs> Daniel checks. Ugly board for Jax. Uh, 32. 3200. Phil's not afraid to bet it. He makes it 3200. Daniel gave up the lead. Phil picked it up. Brand Kenny is done. And the action's back on Daniel with his Jax. Folds. Oh, I had one of those. I had two of them, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. Me too. I had two. I had two Jack jacks. Jack nine of hearts. I had two jacks. <laughs> Jack nine of hearts. By the way, I could be throwing in that non-weighted game, balancing yeah, the range in the lights. That wasn't a good flop for me. I don't really care what you did. Right. Daniel's actually annoyed, and Phil's telling the truth. <laughs> Even when Locke tells the truth, he makes it seem like he's lying. Action will be on Randy Lou. Nine six. He folds. Suited connectors for Solomon. Raises to 1400. G is out. Action on Daniel. 6 4. Folds. And lock quickly out. Bryn Kenny calls with Queen Jack of Diamonds. To the flop. 10 9 4. Rainbow. Kenny flops an up and down straight draw and checks it. Solomon checks as well. Deuce of spades on the turn. Solomon now with a gut shot. Rick's caught half of his run on runner straight flush draw. Kenny bets 2200. Rick gave up the lead when he checked the flop, so Bryn's semi bluffing now. I can't imagine Rick's ever folding here. He's got some nice implied odds, and everything's funner when you go runner-runner. <laughs> he raises the 6,200. A raise in this spot can sometimes look exactly like what it is. Even if it's not, Bryn knows he can't be drawing dead. And he calls. We know Bryn's got the best hand, but I doubt Bryn thinks that. He definitely wants to peel the river. Which is three of diamonds, Solomon makes a straight. Rick gets there with a pretty disguised hand, but Bryn's only got queen high, so he may not get any action. Bryn's checked it over to Solomon. Yeah. Rick bets 8,300. If Bryn decides to get cute here, it'd be a disaster for him. Nope, he doesn't, he lays it down. Bryn's been playing pretty well this week. And Solomon rivers the nuts, but can't get paid off from Kenny. There's tons more action to come when we return from Las Vegas here on The Big Game. Welcome back to Las Vegas and The Big Game, where Amanda Leatherman has joined the players at the table. Amanda raising her hostess aggro factor. <laughs> the actual start on Rick Solomon with 10-7, folds, G folds, a six for Daniel Negreanu. You can sweat mine too, man. Okay, I'm going to. King deuce for Phil Locke. Amanda sweating the hand and playing with Phil Locke's therapeutic putty. Yeah, I don't like this hand. Daniel folds. I'm trying to play good while you watch. Then what's Phil Locke doing? Don't play because I'm here. Phil raises to 800, Bren Kenny's out, it's over to Lou, ace king. In the big blind. I smell three bet. You're trapped into having to look at a flop, sir. No matter what. I raise. It's just him. He just re-raises every pot. <laughs> That's what he does. His three bet percentage is off the charts. Randy Lou's put in three bets to 3,200. Oh, did I make it too much? I raise the maximum. And Phil Locks made it four bets with King Deuce. I hope Amanda's impressed by watching $10,000 burn. Um. I put, a, I put a lot in, um, <laughs> like, thir I don't, I put a lot in, 30. 40 or something? Our first five bet. Yeah. <laughs> 32, there we go. Internet players. Okay. So Randy Lou's re-raised a lot. Came just in time for some action. What do you think, Amanda? This is what you call playing this hand very poorly. <laughs> an example of how to not play this particular hand. What did he have? That was a good move. You like that? Mm -hmm. You only like, like the part on the river the where I folded. <laughs> and Lou takes the pot without a flop. Why do you try to buck heads with a young kid like that? You know he's the problem not is I showed my hand. Whenever I show my hand, I get I say, oh, I'm gonna play fancy. Because <laughs> yeah. you, know? you showed it to me. Yeah. So it's just my came. fault. No, it's my <laughs> fault. You, it could have been anybody. Okay. I, I can show like the. Uh, I just, just, just I just my brain melts down once I show something. You don't have to show me. I'm just gonna look at Daniel's this time. You never. You do just that. want to be a hero at heart. I want to be a hero. Yeah, I just wanted to be a hero. It's true. He did want to be a hero. You're trying to show off. It's true. I'm like that's why. Action will start on the cannon with Ace Three. She lays it down. 
Now I'm gonna try and show off too. Check me out, huh? Is that sexy? Oh. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> I know. Daniel's raised. Uh-oh. Lock re-raises with Ace Deuce. Nano Noko, 9-8, lays it down. 9-7 for Solomon, out. This is 33. You already know what I'm gonna do. Pretty much what I always do. Daniel calls. Daniel actually thinks the words to that Stevie Wonder song are, I just called, and that's it. Flop is 9-3-7, Daniel flops a gut shot. And checks. 65. Phil's ace is best. It's a lot of, a lot of heat. A lot of heat, Mr. Luck. Daniel gets himself into these situations where he calls pre-flop and then feels he has to call the flop. Now facing a $6,500 bet. Definitely not folding. Can promise you that. Ob. Be my card. Be the one I want. He just calls. Eight of hearts on the turn. Daniel checks. 18-4. Lock bets 18,400. That looks like such a card I would want. It's actually not even remotely a card he would want. Not only did he miss, but now he's drawing to the dummy end of a four card straight. Meanwhile, Phil Locks bluffing with the best of it. All right, take it down. Negreanu folds. I have a feeling Phil Lock has something here. I thought I had the best hand. You did. You did. You definitely had. I can guarantee you had the best hand. Only I will know. Oh, I know we had the best hand. Did you see my hand? I saw your hand. You sick pup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to lose if you see my hand. That's usually what happens when she comes and sweats my hands. Hey! No, I'm kidding. Joking. Thank you, Amanda. You were a good luck charm. I knew it from the beginning. <laughs> One man's good luck charm is another man's cooler. No way. So glad I raised pre flop. No playing real hand slow, that's for sure. Well, I don't know if Ace Deuce counts as a real hand, but Phil Locke is playing fast, slow, medium cool. He and Randy Lou are getting their money into the middle of the table more than any of the other players. While the loose cannon, Courtney G, is playing anything but loose, she's only involved 10% of the time, and I'm sure the Sharks are noticing. Courtney's not playing enough hands to gain any traction. Even when she's been up, it's been for very little. Hopefully, she'll adjust her game now that she's down. Quick reminder, the cannon only gets to keep their profit. I'm almost back up to my old highest tick. My old highest tick was 17.2, and I'm only at 2,000 away. Brandon Kinney. That's Daniel's way of saying, cool story, bro. <laughs> King Queen for Phil Locke, min raises. Bryn Kenny out. What are you waiting for? What am I waiting Kings? for what? I'm in there. Can I make a three? <laughs> Bryn's run a couple of nice bluffs. He just hasn't gone and blogged about them yet. Lou raises the 3,000 with the 10-7, and the action's on the cannon. 10-4 of spades. Folds. Negrano with queen 10. Daniel's out of position. And out of the hand. And lock calls. Standard call against a guy who three bets constantly. To the flop for a six, two hearts. Lock checks. Randy's got a flush draw. Should be more than enough reason to continue. And it is. Bets 4,400. Phil's actually got the best hand, and he's seen Nano come out swinging plenty. Chinese poker. Lock raises to 11-2. With the profit pile. Haven't even cut into this. So this could be gamble. This could be gamble time. 11-2? 11-2 total. I call. And Lou calls. I like Phil's raise. He knows Nano doesn't need to have an ace to three bet or to continue. It's a very wet board. Randy, on the other hand, pretty confident his hearts are live. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Big brick. Check. Lock checks. Blue checks. Randy gets a free card. Eight of diamonds on the river. 42,000. Phil Locke bets 42,000. Phil Locke has unibombed the river. And Lou is out. Look at Locke just swinging. Swinging for the fences. You're in that mood all of a sudden. I thought that was the right amount to put up. You're, you play based on mood. I know that already. Come on. A lot of mood. A lot of mood. You're in that mood to just bet OK, baby. OK, a little bit of I that's true. Up. I'm trying to find spots to put money in. It's true. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't fly all the way out to Vegas just to <laughs> right. knit up. <laughs> Say what? Was that the profit pile, pile or the original pile? <laughs> well, I that? cut. I went into the buy-in with the 42 bet. That's, that's why for sure. I folded so fast. Smart. See, now he's thinking like a live player. 
You know, <laughs> live can have a double meaning in poker. Wonder which one Daniel meant. A loaded comment. Phil Log bluffing with the best hand and keeping everyone confused. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, and the big game. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff. There's almost 850 grand on that table, and all six of these players are fighting for their share. This time around, action is going to start on super aggressive Randy Liu. He's probably disappointed he can't three bat right now. Ace four for Liu. Folds. Glad you just called him super aggressive. Wrong. King five for the cannon. <laughs> Folds. That's why I'm the analyst. Jack 10 for Daniel on the button. Raises to 800. Interesting min raise from Daniel. Ace 10 of hearts for Locke. Calls. Bryn's got a bad hand, but he's super priced in. Everyone's got a 10. Kenny calls. Please, guys, don't cut into my buy-in stack. Please. Three-way action of the flop. King, Jack, Deuce. Check. Phil checks his gut shot. Check. Kenny checks bottom pair over to Daniel, who paired his Jack. Daniel's the original raiser and somehow hit his live card despite being dominated. Daniel bets 1,600. Locke calls. Ace high will be good there, a fair percentage of the time. Plus, he's got outs. With a bet and a call, this should be a pretty easy fold for Bryn. But he's reaching for chips. Raises to 6,200. Sick check raise bluff. It's got Daniel thinking. And Bryn gets Daniel off his hand and locked two. I feel locked beat. He had Bryn beat two. Uh, yeah, but I was going to get my there. Favorite Can I see the turn? King Goose suited. I had. No, a, best hand can I show. see the turn? Yeah. Shows him the bluff. Goose 10. Oh, a little bluffy. You were drawing so dead, too, because I had Jack 10. <laughs> so Bryn Kenny shoves it in Daniel's face there, and that can only add to his no holds barred reputation. I'm Bryn Kenny, and I'm on the big game. My table image is they come to the table and they wish they didn't sit down next to me that day. I don't know, I'm just aggressive, I like to win. I don't really instigate people, I just instigate by raising them. Some people don't get happy when they get raised so much, but a lot of people get out of the way too. Ugh. I think I was beat. Good chance. It just all depends on the person and if they want to start attacking back or not, if the two heads are gonna collide or not. The last time any of these players collided with a guy in purple, it was in a McDonald's Playland. After that last collision, Bryn Kenny's up almost 11,000. They just eat away at you, huh? Like hands oh, so, that yeah. from, from a year and a half ago or whatever. <laughs> Action's on Daniel. Folds. Lock folds. Over to Bryn Kenny. 7-6. Raises to 1,400. Kenny looking for his next collision victim. Action folds over to the cannon. Ace Jack. And it looks like Bryn and Courtney might be on the same path. I'll call. She calls. Pretty sure Bryn knows he's behind once Courtney makes the call. Heads up to the flop. 9-8-4 rainbow. Kenny's up and down. Courtney's got the best hand, but she's out of position, and she's got little shot at getting Bryn to fold the flop. She should play in flow and check to the razor. 2,000. Cannon will fire 2,000. Courtney's taking the lead here, and I think that's a mistake. Bryn Kenny will try to bully the cannon. He raises to 5,500. Bryn reads her like a book with large font. And it's just that easy. G lays it down, and Kenny's going to win a pot worth 11,000. Oh, yeah, and he seems to almost feel bad about it. Would you consider yourself a competitive person? Um, yeah. Because you looked like you were annoyed that he just raised you right there. <laughs> like it was personal. So the purple chip eater, Bryn Kenny, drags another pot while our loose cannon heads in the wrong direction. Lots more big game on the way. Welcome back to our state-of-the-art poker room here in the middle of the desert. Right now, cards are in the air, and action will start on internet phenom Randy Liu. 10-4 of diamonds. Folds. Solomon's out. Cannon's out. 5-8 for Daniel on the button. Raises to 800. Daniel's a vegan, but likes to play his fair share of cheese. Turns into calls. not being able to trust pretty much anybody. And Kenny calls. 
That's why trust, when you finally trust somebody, it's such a luxury and beautiful thing. It's like love. Uh, These two talking yeah. hairstylists. Check. Deuce trade deuce. Phil checks. Kenny checks his gut shot. Daniel had the pre-flop lead. 16. 16. Keeps it. He bets 1,600. Lock calls. And Kenny's out. Lock's not to be trifled with today. He knows ace high is good a fair percentage of the time. Queen of clubs on the turn. Thanks. Lock checks again. What did he do? He checked. Already? Yes. And Grano checks his cards and then checks. Jack of spades on the river. Lock has this hand locked up as long as he doesn't fold. Checks again. Daniel checks. Ace with what? Seven? Pair twos, ace, queens, yeah, seven plays. <laughs> seven <laughs> plays. You see, that's all they read me. And Lock wins a small one. At ace five. Oh, I just folded half the pot, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I'm learning to merge my lies better, aren't I? <laughs> Solomon not in on the joke. Are you, I had you for a minute. He counted it for too long. He said pair of twos. If he didn't say pair of twos, there was a chance. But once you recognize the pair of twos. Right, then it ruined it. If you just yeah. said, oh, okay, yeah. yeah ace, queen, se ace, queen, yeah, jack, just, seven. Like, look at yeah. it, you're like, oh. Yep, queen, seven jack, place. seven, oh, yeah. Had me going for a second, and I could see the whole cards. An action will start on our cannon, Courtney G. Five, Trey, folds. It's amazing how much you have in common. Lock and Kinney. Negrano folds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two sweet Irish boys. King nine for Phil Lock. Calls. The ATV accent explains the limp. <laughs> Queen nine for Kenny. Raises to 2,000. Queen nine suited for Lou. Oh. Calls. Solomon folds. And Lock folds. Can't play this in. <laughs> I don't see it happening. Lou's free rolling spades. Ace, deuce, queen. Check. Both players have flopped middle pair, and Lou's checked it. Check. Kenny checks. Ace of hearts on the turn. Check. Lou checks again. Who will fire first? Kenny also checks. River's the jack of spades. No more respect. Lou bets 3,000. Kenny quickly calls. Chop. You play that garbage? Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so our two young guns chop that one up. Right now, Daniel Negrano's our big winner up almost 50 large, followed by Locke with 33 grand. Bryn Kenny's up a respectable 19K, while Hollywood home game hero Rick Solomon is down 33 Benjamins. LC Courtney G is down four grand, while Randy Lou is stuck over 95 dimes with no signs of changing his uber aggressive style. Courtney. Two shows down, three more to go. You ready to mix it up? I might. I might think about you it. You might. You will. We know you will. Of course she will. Okay. She's, she's competitive, I can tell. Totally. She doesn't like losing. Rin raised her, she was like <sighs> She's playing good, solid poker. It's hard to really defend against it. It's you, you just the equilibrium style is the best against Courtney. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. <laughs> I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff saying, ship it. I thought you were the bad boy of poker. When are we going to see that? Bad boy? Yeah, that's what everyone told me. I don't know. What am I? So what do you want me to do? There's no, not a lot of jewelry. He's very tame with this. <laughs> are you ready for her to gamble? You know, she's not good. She's playing really good, solid. I can't wait till, the, maybe like when she's got 40 hands left, she's going to be a, pan, a cannon, just like, uh. like a real cannon. She's going to start shipping it. I know it. She's already got It's going to be so fun. Yeah, she can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited for that part. <laughs>